Hi, hello. Welcome back. Today, we're gonna talk about axioms 4, 5, and 6 of Dermelo Frankel's set theory. These axioms will give us new possibilities to build sets, and they will get us to axioms 7, 8, and 9, which are the most meaty, powerful, and discussed axioms. So let's start with a brief recap of what we're at. So far, we have seen axiom 1 that says that two sets are equal if they have the same elements. This is basically the definition of identity or equality. And then we have seen axiom 2 that says that you cannot have a sequence of sets, a1, a2, a3, etc., such that a1 has a2 as an element, a2 has a3 as an element, and so on forever. You cannot have that. And axiom 3, which is really important, and says that if you have a formula phi and a set A, you can define the set B of all the elements of A that satisfy phi. And that's it for the recap. So here's axiom 4. Axiom 4 says that if you have two Amazon boxes, then you can put them into a bigger box. Really, it says that in a bit more formal way, but it says that. So let's state axiom 4, which is the axiom of pairing. If you have two sets A and B, you can create a new set whose only elements are A and B. And you will write it like that. And let's write axiom 4 in a formal way. For every A and for every B, there exists C such that for every X, X belongs to C if and only if X is equal to A or X is equal to B. Axiom 4 does not only allow us to create pairings, but also to create sets with just one element. Because if I set A and B equal to A in Axiom 4, I can create the set X whose elements are A and A. And this, according to Axiom 1, is not different from the set that only has the element A, because they don't have any different elements. So we can create sets with just one element. I want to stress that what we have here is a order purse, because the set with the elements A and B is just the same thing as the set with the elements B and A. If we want to define ordered pairs, where order makes a difference, we need to remember that the characteristic property of ordered pairs is that two ordered pairs A, B, C, D are equal if and only if A is equal to C and B is equal to D. So, how do we define ordered pairs using axioms and set? You might want to pause the video before seeing the solution. And here's a possible definition. You can define the ordered pair AB as the set whose elements are A and the pairing AB. And you might want to try and prove that this definition satisfies the characteristic property of order pairs, that one. And be careful, because you're gonna need axiom 2 for that proof. And if you're able to do that proof, leave a comment with your proof. So here's axiom 5. If you have a jar full of jars of candies, you can get rid of the little jars and just let the candies mix inside the big jar. That's axiom 5. If you have a set F, whose elements are sets, then you can create the set whose elements are all the elements in all the sets in F. Or more formally, for every set F, there exists B, such that for every element X, X belongs to B if and only if. There exists A in F and X belongs to A. We say that B is the union over F, or that B is the union of all the A's in F. It is important to stress here that we can create the unions of as many sets as we want, but we need to know previously that all those sets belong to another set. Without this condition, you could create, for example, the union of all the existing sets, and that would lead us again to Russell's contradiction. So, am I allowed to create the union of any two sets A and B? And the answer is yes, because if I have the sets A and B, I can use axiom 4 to create the pairing with A and B, and I can use axiom 5 to create the union over that pairing, and that is just the union of A and B. 
and with the actions we have we can create finite sets because look if I have the elements a b c I can use axiom 4 to create the set with the elements a b and I can use axiom 4 to create the set with the element c and I can use axiom 4 to create the set with those two sets and now I can use axiom 5 to create the union that is the set with the elements a b c and if I now have element d I can create the set with d and I can create the pairing of those sets and I can create the union and I get the set with the elements a b c d and I can keep on going like that by adding element e for example in the same way using axiom 4 and axiom 5 and you get the idea but I'm gonna let roll the animation for a bit because I just love manim and you might think that we also need an axiom for intersection but that's not true because if I have two sets a and b I can create the pairing with a and b and I can create the union over that pairing and that's just the union of a and b as we already know but now I can define the intersection of a and b as the set of all the elements x that belong to the union of a and b and also satisfy the property that they belong to a and they belong to b and that's a property a formula that we can call phi so we are using axiom 3 to define the intersection and we can generalize this definition by considering a non-empty set f with elements a b c d etc and we can define the intersection over f over this non-empty set as the set of all the element x that belong to the first set of f that is a but also belong to all the other sets in f so axiom 6 here we go oh by the way here we have the catalog of books that do not contain a picture of themselves but we don't need it anymore and axiom 6 says that if you have two jars of candies you can open them and then you can get all the candies inside you can unwrap them like that you can unwrap them all and you can put all the unwrapped candies in the second jar that's axiom 6 really axiom 6 replacement if you have a set a and a rule f of x that associates a set to any given set x then you can replace each element x of a with its image f of x that is you can create the set let's call it b of all the images f of x of all the elements x in a and as usual let's state it formally if f is a function then for every a there it is there exists b there it is such that for every y, y belongs to b if and only if there exists x in a such that y is equal to f of x. So b is the image of every element of a under the action of f. and that is axiom 6 we will use axiom 6 later in this series but let's make an example of how to use it let's say we have the set a with the with the elements a b c d and the function f that given x gives you back the set with only the element x if we apply f to the set a we get a new set let's call it b with all these elements but we could do that even without using axiom 6 because this is a finite set but what if we consider an infinite set for example this one and we want to apply f then we need to use axiom 6 but here's an important question we still don't know if infinite sets exist or to tell you the truth we still don't know if sets exist at all we don't even know if the empty set exists we're gonna solve this situation in the upcoming videos and if you want to leave a comment saying ciao at the end I'm gonna choose some of them and say hello in the next video so bye ciao